What is happening? Today, I want to talk about how I use scales, how I learn scales in a way that is musical. There's going to be some music theory. I'm going to try to make it as accessible as possible. I used to be a big music theory nerd. I think that a lot of it um, held me back as a player, but some of it is very useful, and it's also very useful in communicating with other people. But as using it as like a what is the next thing, I think again, if you haven't watched any of my other videos, this is the key. We are in open detuning. So, today we're gonna to talk about the major scale. There are so many scales, there's a million scales. Um, there's pentatonic scales, there are diatonic scales, the major scale is a diatonic scale. It's a seven note scale. We've all heard it before. When I use this same, I use this same approach for all the scales, for the minor pentatonic scale, uh, for minor scales, if you want to get really fancy with a mixolydian scale or some other sort of scale, there's, there's a million tricks. This is where we start. We start with the major scale and there's a lot of reasons why, but the real reason is because that's what sort of music theory and all of this stuff is built off of. So, the major scale, you've heard it. You may think of it as Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do from Sound of Music, right? Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. So we may think of this as in the key of D, uh, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. So I think in numbers, and I think in numbers because it makes the most sense to me on stringed instruments with frets. It's a pattern-based instrument. There are certain patterns on the guitar. So if I can think in numbers, then it doesn't matter what key I'm in. The, the shape is the same. So the licks can be similar. All that stuff starts to make a little more sense when numbers, I have to learn less stuff. In letters, I have to know what the notes are for each key. In numbers, I just have to know where I am and, and, I, and I know the whole scale. So that is the reason for this. There will be more of this later. Uh, this is how I think of the instrument. So going forward, when we talk about lap steel or guitar or, or musical notes, I'm going to refer to it in numbers. Let me start with what that means. What that means is this. In our scale, it's a seven note scale. This is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Now I know that seems self-explanatory. The reason we start with major scale, even though we haven't done any major scale stuff yet, is because if I was doing a pentatonic scale, for example, this would be one, flat three, four, five, flat seven, one. It's all based off the major scale. Every number is based off the major scale. So the way I think of the instrument is based off of the major scale. And, and, and so I want to start here. I can take a pattern and I can move it all over the neck. So let's start with this. The numbers of the scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. It starts over. And we have our ones. We want to learn where our ones are. It's the most important note. It's the root. It's called the tonic. It's the one. It's the primary note in our scale. We should know where they are. Open six, open four, open one. Also, fifth fret, two and five. Also, 8th fret on the 3rd string, and then it starts over again at 12th fret. A little out of tune there at the top. So let's start, we have our ones, let's start with just a real simple 1, 2, 3. 
You hear it all the time. It's really com it's a really common really simple melodies. These are this is a very common place to start. It's a really useful place for solos to start, etc., etc. So, one, two, three. Try to make it as musical as possible. We're not talking about practicing a scale. What we're talking about is playing music. And so, take the one, two, three. It's a, it's a melody. Right? Find all the different ways to play it. Obviously, one string. That's eight, seven, uh, eight, ten, twelve on my third string, also uh, five, seven, nine on the second string, or open to four on the, on the first string. Try going in between the strings. You're gonna start finding the patterns that are for one to two to three on two strings. This is the basis of finding melodies and, and creating solos. Um, we have licks, obviously. But that, that's going to get old fast, so the, the real key to creating something that's memorable and nice uh, is, is going to be a melody. We know one, two, and three. We're starting on the ones. We are learning our one, two, and three. We have now started working on those throughout the neck, hopefully. I want you to take a break. I want you to just work on the one, twos, and threes. Playing a one on multiple strings in different places gives you really cool melodies. Okay, I just added a note, so let's add that note. This is the seven. So now we have our one, we have our two, we have our three. You might go, well, I should go to four. Let's go to seven instead. Seven is down though. You see what I'm saying? Now, we're adding a note below the one. We're still working around our one. Don't get carried away yet. We're gonna stick around the one for now. Keeping it really simple, finding really beautiful melodies using just a few notes, it, it's it's easy to get carried away and start trying to just range throughout the whole the whole fingerboard. But it's not it's not the way to go. Just the one, two, three, and seven. So let's let's try playing around a different a different note. We've done one. Let's try let's try five. So here's five. It's on the seventh fret, first string. And then we're gonna add the uh, the four, which is the fifth fret on the first string, and the three, which is the uh, the fourth fret on the third string. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna hit my low string to give myself some context for what these, if I'm playing just around this note, for example, then, then the note center is really simple. That's obviously where the note center is. But if I'm playing here, 
this can feel like the center unless we have something underneath to give us this is not the center. Now, We can do that all over the neck. So, if you're counting, so far we've played one, two, three, seven, four, and five. That's six notes. If we're in a diatonic scale, we're gonna add the seventh note, the six. Okay, it's right above the five. <laughs> to the one. The key here is not necessarily the notes I'm playing. The key isn't, isn't necessarily even to make it sound good, although that is obviously a plus. We are playing music, that is the point. But the key with these exercises is to start to know what you're playing. Because as we start adding chords, different chords have different numbers. And it's pretty easy to figure out which is which. Figuring out the melodies becomes a lot easier when I know where I am versus what chord is playing. So, I have these notes. We've started with the one, we've started with the five, we've added all the other ones. One and five is the bottom three notes of my chord. That's a one. There's a three, one, five, five up top. Now we're talking in numbers. We are thinking in numbers. So here's the way we build a chord. The way we build a chord, a major chord, is the one, the three, and the five of its major scale. What that means is that this shape the shape on our, on our open strings is a major scale shape. It's a major chord shape. Straight across the major is a major chord. Now, we will notice that when we go to our second chord, and we haven't really talked about this, let me throw up a quick. Now, if we, if we play just our scale, and again, I want you to use your ear. I want you to find the notes. We're not, we're not playing. It's not about playing the scale in, in order like that. There's almost no reason that I would ever do that, except for to show somebody what the scale is. So, good times. But, knowing what the scale is, lets me know that my next notes for each of these strings is going to be the second fret, second fret, second fret, first fret, second fret, second fret. Now I happen to know because I do this a lot. Uh, this is two, two, six, two, four, six, two. The way that this one note is down, I'm going to throw up a a, a diagram here, right? The open strings, the open strings right here, I, I hope, we'll see, we'll see what happens. The open strings are a major chord, straight across is a major chord. This next shape here is a minor chord. Obviously we can't really play it straight across as a minor chord. 
um, to make it all ring, but, but knowing that these are the notes to a minor chord, in this case, E minor. Can be helpful. Knowing that it's two, six, two, four, six, two is super helpful. Knowing where my ones are, I know I have a one here, so I know this is a two. We know we've learned where our fives are, though we haven't talked about it. But here's a, our fives are open on the um, on the second, fifth fret, third fret, third string, and uh, uh, seventh fret on six, four, and one. We're gonna have num notes everywhere. But knowing where my five is means I know where my six is. Knowing where my one is means I know where my seven is. Five, six, seven, one. As I start learning my shapes, where my ones are, I know that this here is a major chord, right? What number is it? One, uh, yeah, one, two, three, it's the four chord. So I have a one in my four chord. The four chord happens to be four, one, four, six, one, four. The way this helps me, the way thinking in numbers helps me, although obviously thinking in letters helps the same way, but then I gotta know offhand that if I'm playing in D, G is the four. When I just know, here's my one, here's my four, then this shape, I'm like, there's the four chord, there's a four note, there's my one note. There's a shape there that I can use to create melodies. When I start learning my chords, now if I'm playing a song and it's got a one note first, then it's gonna go to the four chord. Because I know the notes in the chord and the notes in the scale, I can play a four against the four, or I can play it up here, because I know where it is, because I know where my five is. Five is here, four is two frets back. Right, I know where my three is, so I know where my four is. It's one fret up. As I start learning the patterns of the chords, of the notes around the chords, I'm gonna start knowing how to play to these chords. As soon as they show up, I'm not, I don't have to sit there and work it out anymore. It's like, oh, we're playing here. Okay. I can start to make a melody that fits around my chords. And the chords all, if we, if we just sit here and work them out, they go straight across the, uh, straight across the neck here. I have my one chord, my two chord is based off of this note, my three chord is here, my four chord is here, four chord again is straight across, it's major, my five chord, straight across, it's major, my six chord is minor, and then seven chord is diminished, nobody plays diminished chords anyway, I just said that just to piss people off, that's all I did, that's why, that's the only reason, I love diminished chords, but I just wanted somebody to be like, ah, keyboard warrior in the comments, so, we're talking about numbers in the scale. The first step, because I may have gotten a little advanced here, the first step is just talking about what number am I playing? Base it around the one. Here's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, one. Knowing where my ones are. Knowing where my fives are. Between the five and the one, there's two, three, and four. Three notes. Between the five and the one the other way, there's six and seven. There's only two notes. If I know where my ones are and my fives are, I'm dialed in. So if we start learning the notes around one and five, I'm gonna add one more, knowing where my threes are. These are all the notes from the, from the one chord, from the major chord D. D major, one, five, one, three, five, one. It's the first time I've said that this whole video. We'll see what happens. 
If I know where my ones, my threes, and my fives are, then I know where every note in the scale is. I'm gonna say that again because I think it's really important. If I know where my ones, my threes, and my fives are, I know where every note in the scale is. Here's why. The note above my one is a two. So I have one, two, the next note up is three. So if I know where that is, the only one I needed was two, which I know is two frets down from three, I know it's two frets up from one. One, two, three. If I know where my three is, I know where my four is. It's one fret up. If I know where my five is, I also know the four is one fret down. Two frets up from five is six. If I go to my one, one fret down is seven. There's always a note from the one chord that's right next to either the one, the three, or the five. So if I know where those are, the ones, the threes, and the fives, I know where everything else is. If I know my one's here, three's here, two's here, four's here, five, six, three, two, one. This is a great exercise. I would try to make it a little more musical than that, but knowing where I'm like one, two, three, four, three, five, six, seven, one, seven, five, Two, three, one, six, five, four. I don't know, I didn't like that one very much. Three, two, three, three, two, three, three, two, four, three, two, one. This is really helpful. This is a really useful thing. It's really important to know where you are. We're going to start adding chord changes, right? So one of the things that happens if is... I know where my ones are. I know the notes in my one chord are one, three, and five. I'm gonna learn this other thing and you can work on it now. I think it's relatively self-explanatory. We're gonna learn this. I'm gonna go through this a little more once I figure out how to get some music playing in a way that's easy, um, maybe MIDI control. I don't know, we're gonna figure it out. But the point is, once I get something happening with a looper or something, we'll be able to talk about playing over changes. But one, three, five, is always going to be in the change, almost always. The four chord, just in case you're wondering, four, six, one. The five chord, five, seven, two. It, we can work them all out across here. Four, one, four, six, one, four. Five, two, five, seven, two, five. But I start with my one chord. I start with these notes. And I start by knowing where I am. One, one two, three. Just the one, two, threes. <laughs> Just the one, two, threes. That stuff is, is going to help no matter what level of player you are. And again, as I sit here and I start trying to play just the one, two, threes, it really makes me get into my bag of, of touch, my bag of timing, my bag of rhythm, because now I'm not, I don't have the freedom to just play all the notes as fast as I can. I have to think. See, I got, I got complacent, I added the seven. I gotta not do that. We wanna keep trying to get more creative. That's just the one, two, and three. Now I have something that people can grab onto. That's gonna be much more impressive in a solo, even though I know we all wanna hear the all the stuff. And if you want the technique for that stuff, MikeWitcher.com. Lessons with Troy. Same joke every video, by the way. Just keep it going. Point is, the fast stuff, I'm going to leave that to the guys who are technicians. I am not one of those guys. I can tell you that the way that that I think about this stuff has really helped me develop melodies that can catch someone's ear. Um, I, 
I, it took me a long time to learn that that was the thing. And I've had people that I really respect go, hey man, maybe you should focus on melodies and a little bit less on licks. And at the time, I wasn't mature enough maybe to hear that or, or ready to hear that for whatever reason. But this is the thing that I think, at least for me, creates the most listenable music. Um, when I listen to music, it's the riffs and it's the melodies and it's the things that make you go, you keep coming back. That's the trick. So, it starts with the scale, even though it's not about playing a scale just as fast as you can up and down with a metronome on. It's about playing with feel, playing with time. Add some drums. Add something to give you a little sense of, of something. Have fun with it. The whole point of this is to have fun. Hopefully, this is useful and it made sense, it made sense in my head. Thanks for hanging out.